This is the second part of the section, the derivative and shape of a graph. Uh, we would say the second half, but it's not nearly as long as the first part was. And so in this part, we're going to talk about the second derivative test. Uh, our learning outcomes are to explain the relationship between a function and its first and second derivatives. I think we already saw that in the previous section. And state the second derivative test for local extrema. And really, I think this makes it a lot easier, um, it, this, this test. So what they're really getting at is, think about what we did in the last section. We talked about, you know, if, if, if it's going up and then down, you got a maximum. And in this case, you see the slope is getting less and less steep to the point that now it gets negative, more and more negative to like this point right here. And so this is a downward facing curve. So its second derivative is negative because its slope is trending in the negative direction. And so that means you have a peak here. And also for this curve down here, as it's going down, it's getting less negative, less negative, more, more positive, more positive, more positive. And so our second derivative is positive, and then we have a minimum. And this is the essence of the second derivative test, is that when you take the second derivative, if you have a critical number from the first derivative, take the second derivative at that point. If it's, if it's negative, then you end up with a maximum if it's positive you end up with a minimum a local minimum so suppose f prime of c is zero that's your critical number if f double prime the second derivative is continuous over the interval containing c if the second derivative is positive that means it's opening up you have a local minimum if the second derivative is negative that means it's opening down then you have a maximum and if the second derivative is zero then the test is inconclusive So example, uh, using the second derivative test, use the second derivative test to find the uh, location of all local extrema for f of x equals x to the fifth minus 5x cubed. So our first derivative, f prime of x, is going to be 5x to the fourth minus 15x squared. So if we want to find the zeros here, we have 5x to the fourth minus 15x squared equals zero. This is for our critical values. So 5x squared can be factored out, and we have x squared minus 3 equals zero. So our zeros would be x or 5x squared or just x squared equals zero. So x would be zero or x squared minus 3 equals 0 means x squared equals 3 or x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So let's find our second derivative. Our second derivative is going to be uh, let's see, that 4 comes out so it's 20 x cubed minus 30 x. Okay. And that could be factored, uh, so we could call that 10x times 2x squared minus 3. And I kind of feel like I'm a little beyond what they want us to do here, but uh, this actually gives us something. So if we take 10x and set it equal to 0, we have x equals 0. Now x equals 0 is also a critical number. And it's also zero of the second derivative, so that's going to be in the flexion point, I believe. We'll see what happens. 2x squared minus 3 equals zero. 2x squared equals 3. x squared equals 3 halves. x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 halves, or plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. So um, these would be other inflection points. Okay, so we have... Um, as we said, stated earlier, let's look at our points. So f double prime, look at zero. This is, I'm looking at the critical points here. Uh, critical points of x equals negative square root of three, zero, and square root of three. So we already know that x f double prime of zero equals zero, so it's inconclusive. And then. Um, we have f double prime of negative square root of 3. That is going to be 
negative 30 times the square root of 3. And that's going to be a local max. So that's less than 0, so it's a local max. And f double prime of the square root of 3 equals 30 times the square root of 3. Greater than 0, that's a local minimum then. Okay. And let's look at this f of x equals 0. So for x equals 0, we will look at a chart here. And so a number smaller than 0 is negative 1, and bigger than 0 is 1. And we'll look at the factors here of the 5x squared from the first derivative. And we'll look at that x squared minus 3. And we'll see what happens here. So leading up to the 0, so putting the negative 1 in there, you're going to end up with a positive. And putting the 1 in there, you'll get a positive as well. Putting negative 1 into x squared minus 3, you're going to get a negative. And put the 1 in there, you get a negative as well. So that's a negative and a negative. They're being multiplied. That means it's decreasing on both of them. So this would be either um, uh, a max or a min. So not a max or a minimum. So um, that's about it. Let me see if there are any other instructions here. Find the location of all extreme. We found them. Okay. So that's about how you do it. Find your critical numbers, take the second derivative, and plug them in. If you have something that's inconclusive, then you can work on that. Let's do another example here. Consider the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3 halves x squared minus 18x. The point c equals 3, negative 2, satisfy that the first derivative is 0. Uh, so we're going to use the second derivative test to determine whether f has a local max or a local min at these points. So we're going to take the, take the derivative, and that's going to be 3x squared minus 3x minus 18. Our second derivative is going to be 6x minus 3. So, um, you know, I can't help it but to find that, that uh, point of inflection, but I'll resist it here. Our f double prime at 3, second derivative at 3, is equal to, uh, let's see, Fifteen. That's positive, and our second derivative at negative two is equal to negative fifteen, which is negative. So uh, this is going to be our local minimum at x equals three, and then the local max is that x equals negative uh, 2. That's it. And by the way, if you took the 6x minus 3, is that equals 0? x equals 1 half is your inflection point. OK, moving on. Uh, this one did not come through in the printout. So we have y equals f of x, which equals, uh, oh, this one we get it's a series of um, clues. So y equals f of x. f of negative 4 equals f of negative 1, which is 0. So that we know that we have the points 4 comma 0, and, no sorry, negative 4, 0, and the other point is negative 1, 0. Okay, we have that much. Our critical numbers are given to us as f of negative 3 or f prime of negative 3 equals f prime of negative 1 which is 0 so that x equals negative 3 and negative 1 are critical numbers Okay, what else they give us? 
they tell us that f double prime of negative 2 is an, or I'll just say equal 0. So negative 2 is x equals negative 2 is an inflection point. Okay. So uh, a couple things. We talk about intervals here. If we have the interval from negative infinity to negative 3, then we have the interval from negative 3 to negative 1, and then the interval from negative 1 to infinity, that based off what we're seeing here, I think or this is what we're given. Yeah, I think they give us this f prime of x is negative here, positive here, and negative here. And what this means is that we are going down then up. So x equals negative 3, this is the interpretation part, x equals negative 3 is a local minimum. And then we're going down again here, so x equals negative 1 is a local maximum. So what this problem, my version, uh, everyone's version might be different. My version asks us to come up with a graph. Um, it also gives us a chart where it says that for the interval, this is based off the second derivative, for negative infinity to negative 2, and then from 2 to infinity. Um, this is going to be positive. This is going to be negative. And so that corresponds with these local max and min. And this is for f double prime of x. So we're supposed to come up with what is the graph of this, and they give you multiple graphs. So what we do know for this graph, that at negative 1, it touches here. Because it went through negative 1, 0. Right, negative 1, 0, and then went through negative 4, 0 as well. So at negative 4, it's also crossing there. And then at negative 3, it's going to bottom out. Two might as well put that there. It'll bottom out. And so if I draw the graph, I'll do this in red, it's coming down. And then it come up at some point there, and then go back down again. So somewhere around here, you'd have that inflection point. I'll go to another color for that. So there'd be like an inflection point there. So the graph will look roughly something like this. Okay. And that's it.